We, uh, I previewed this uh, deck in between rounds of the Saturday Challenge. I like to do some playtesting uh, for like next week's stream, usually then. Um, this is kind of like a forgotten, forgotten deck. Let me, let me kind of give the history of this card. Riders of the Mark, despite having the normal Lord of the Rings symbol, is not in the Lord of the Rings uh, set. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> easy to be confused because it's a Lord of the Rings card, Lord of the Rings symbol, but it is in the holiday gift box and was legalized and modern in like November. I remember seeing the preview for the card and wanting to try building around it. And, uh, I just, for some reason or another, like when it got released, I didn't know it got released, I didn't know it was like legal on Magical Mind. And then like a month ago we played against uh, a build of humans I was playing the card and the card is like really crazy it is like it's kind of like the hogak of humans <laughs> uh a one man a seven four trample haste and at the beginning of your instep if it attacked this turn you can return it to your hand and if you do you make a number of one one human soldiers equal to its toughness so kind of kind of just win the game or you know do some crazy stuff we even like on stream we're able to attack through a worm coil engine for lethal twice in the same match uh using riders which was really really cool um we i was also i i i, I want to talk about inti a little bit uh on saturday stream i was playing felden of the whatever the two minute two two when it deals damage you reveal cards and keep cast them i was mostly th i was mostly thinking that that was the best in slot here because um I, you need extra creatures to burning tree into and after having played Inti so much in, like, Asmo decks and Street Wraith decks, um, I was thinking Inti would just not be very good here. But after uh, playtesting Inti, I was wrong. I think I was wrong about Inti the Shell. does a lot. Turns your Esper Sentinel into two twos on turn two. The Trample is, like, a lot more relevant than I realized with Adelaide and Champ and Thelia's Lieutenant. Um, <clears throat> it, it, the, the looting is really nice in a deck that wants to... Maintain a good ratio of lands and spells. Looting wave vials is really nice. It just it just is, I think, the best thing to burning and tree burning tree into. The reason we're playing burning tree in humans is mostly rally the hornberg as a card. I think you really want to maximize if you're going to play riders of the mark. Burning tree also like having a zero mana human in a deck that cares about having a lot of humans in play is nice. And also, um, if you have aether vial in burning tree, this is a, a good way to cast this card really fast. You can have some. Some turn three riders if you vile in your burning tree. Um, but uh, Rider Riley at the Hornberg is, I think, really exciting in the deck. It's a two mana to make two humans, and then all humans gain hasten. So one one like really cool line is like you're gonna go turn one vile, turn two vile and champion of the parish, cast burning tree emissary, cast rally. This is a, a four four. Then uh, these all have haste. You just get it. Um. And then, of course, rally. In addition to giving you some really aggressive starts, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like the the goblin bushwhacker of humans, uh, but it also puts two humans in play to make it like a lot easier to cast your right. Adeline also puts extra tokens in play, so curving Adeline into riders is times. Um, but yeah, I that's <clears throat> also to some extent like humans ha are kind of have been a really slow deck in general. Um, and just giving the deck extra speed, I think, is a really uh, solid way to approach building the archetype. Like, the disruptive humans just are not very good. Meddling Mage, Thalia, Kite Self Rebooter, this package of, like, slow disruption has not been good for a long time. I, we played other build of humans that have been a bit more, like, defensive, like with Mariner, and sometimes you play, like, Nourishing, or the Shoal. But, just bit like, but now you have this, like, kind of crazy uh, busted card, or potentially busted card. Um, I think you just want to be as aggressive as possible, especially with, that. That is also like what that card wants, really wants. Okay, very interesting one there. We're playing Mountain in our deck because we have Rally uh, and Burning Tree, so it's kind of tough to play any basic planes. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand and I'm gonna put back the Adeline. Mister T Dog, the three months Aether Spike with the twenty six. Hey Nation with the fourteen and Wheelux with the seven. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Um, I sure would love to be on the play against Ron, but that is, of course, just the dynamic here, I guess. Uh, if we draw a land, 
feeling pretty good. We get to go Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Violent Sentinel, Cast Rally, Attack for 7, and then next turn get to Lord all of those attackers, which I think will be about lethal. They reveal a Worm Coil engine. Yeah, there is um, Daylight Savings time. I always forget that. Uh, not everybody does that, huh? I also draw the land next turn to give everything haste, but it would be okay. Yeah, we, I think I think to win this uh, this game, we probably need uh, this. So, kind of classic game against Tron. If we were on the play, we're just winning for sure. If my opponent has Tron for Worm Coil next turn, we will probably need to top deck uh, like a Riders to be able to win something like that. But this is a uh, you know tech for seven, and then next turn. Ugh. File this in, 3-3. Three, three. All is dust. All just seems so nice against the uh, the ley lines, right? Probably not super worth my time to play it out, knowing that they've got Worm Coil. Let's go to the next game. Play draw. Uh, bring in the Maggies. I think Magus over in TNT is low in this kind of matchup. Play. Got a Magus on the play. Gonna keep Sentinel on turn one is oftentimes pretty nice against Tron. Could be I think I might actually lead on Sentinel this game. We got plenty of mana. I can maybe just burning tree and get the the vial online. Just basically says you get to draw an extra card if you do. Okay, so I'm gonna go Burning Tree into, into Aether Vial, which is kind of funny. And then next turn we can play Magus and then Vial in the other Sentinel. Then the turn in two turns we can Vial and Adeline, but the, the Magus is hopefully just gonna solo them. We, we we actually are not super good at casting spells through Magus. We have some spells we can still cast. But we're mostly against, like, just bringing this in against Tron and Titan and hoping it uh, just kind of solos them. I guess that's going to finish them off next turn. Maybe it's going to be a little short. We'll at least get uh, a lot of extra humans. Three, and then we have... Six plus seven, thirteen. Okay, so we have three short next turn unless we draw a uh, violin. The pioneer challenge go. Uh, I my alarm ended up not going off, and I ended up keeping through it. Does Tron feel strong? Ah, uh, I don't know if I'd say that. It's just so awful. Yeah, Violing and Burning Tree Emissary is, I think, a really good way to cast Riders. I, I've also, like, kind of always wanted to have a deck that Viled and Burning Tree, and this is, like, I think, kind of the perfect one to do it. Um, yeah, ho hopefully we figure out another place to do it at some point. Now this this card is very crazy. It, it, it attacks for seven, and then it makes four one ones, and then next turn it's, like, definitely going to be one mana. Um, and then, like, when you have, when you have Champion of the Parish, Orthalis, and Orthalis, Lieutenant, Copper Crow, Vanguard, like, these are, like, really crazy. It's, it just does so much. I've not Vialed in Riders yet, no. There was a game on Saturday where I was picking up the, in the ideas on Surreal Decks in Pioneer. Well, you mostly just don't have Fetchlands or Dragon Rage's Channeler in Pioneer, so I'm not, like, excited about it. I'm gonna keep this one. Um, points on a mold of six. Uh, this is kind of classic. Like I lost the die roll against Tron with a deck like this, so I'm just kind of hoping that they stumble for game three. Turn one, chromatic star. I'm gonna lead on vile this time. That's not a human. They very quickly chose Urza's Mind there. Now 
then they play the map. So hopefully, unlike game one, they have to use this map to, to get Tron on turn three. And, um... <laughs> and uh, then we can uh, win with the Magus like last time. Kind of in there. Very similar start to game one. Oh, this time we have a Magus in the Thank you for five. On turn two. Yes, I love to see that expedition map being tapped. Get your Urza's power plant. <laughs> Give me a card. Oh, or not. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't a 2 2 yet. Yeah, keep your card. Um, so, oh, I, need, I need to make sure that if I go Violin Lieutenant, then cast Rally, I'm not missing Lethal here. So if I buy a Violin Lieutenant, these are, I'm going to have 2, 5, 9, um, and then this will be plus 3, 12, 13, 12, 13, 14. I'm one short. Reyes, 41 months, thank you, welcome back. We just double count. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will be three power attacking. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So let's. I'm gonna have a counter on the lieutenant instead of on the map. Yeah, just having like some like turn three kills in your range is such a big deal for the humans deck. Like humans has just been kind of a slow. Aggro deck in general. It's just not a format where you can afford to be that slow. Thanks again, Reyes, for the point. How do you feel about Outburst Ban? Let's just chill and see what happens. I don't think an Outburst Ban would ha will happen. I think it would probably be awesome if it did, <laughs> but, like, I don't think it probably... I don't think it should, you know what I mean? All the games are going to start since the Emissary Magus. Don't you play other cards? I hacked the mainframe. It literally imagine complaining about, uh... Complaining about humans. <laughs> Still, brother. We're all human, after all. I'm only human. I think I should... Yeah, fine. I'm only human, after all. Don't put the blame on... So let's not overcommit by um, playing our hand quite yet. I like that we can present lethal if they were able to cast all his dust this turn somehow. Yeah, banning Leyland. Some people have talked about banning Leyland to go packed. I feel like it's just such a silly, such a silly thought at this point. Just remember all his dust is real. Although they they die if they do that because of the ring. We kind of just have to like chain rings together here, which is harder in Tron because they only play three in the main. Okay, nice. It was good to be Tron. We beat Tron uh, on Saturday, too. Keeping this one. Yeah, so I, I, usually I would think that there's not going to be any changes, like, but they, there is going to be... They're, they're doing a stream today, so they said they said last week they're doing a stream today to talk about the BNR, but I think that there's a very good chance that BNR is, like, timeless pioneer legacy, or, you know, like... I, I don't know that they're necessarily going to be... Stand, I don't think I don't think you think it'll change the standard, but... Just can't say that uh, anything will happen today. Modern. Okay, so I think what I should do here is cast NT, and then if my opponent cracks their fetch in response, I violin the Sentinel, so they won't be able to like do anything to the NT right now. We'll go on Pioneer Cruise. Yeah, Cruise, I think. I think the stream is tomorrow. It's supposed to be today. But I don't know. Thankfully, we have uh, daylight savings time, so the, we got the BNR closer by one hour <laughs> than it would have been otherwise. They're so probably up against Gorios here. Got our Sanctifiers in the sideboard for this matchup. And Magus is, like, might also come in. Their deck is just so soft to Magus sometimes. Did you have Burning Chew? We can cast Riders. Maybe next. Go to combat. 
I'll discard Secluded Courtyard over Sacred Foundry because we can't actually cast uh, Fourth February moment. You have Solitude and of and of memory. Not Solitude and Ephemerate. Let's vial this in. It is tapped and go. They pitch to Solitude. Let's see if they like loot into Fern. If they were to loot, maybe they would have done it before Solituding. Well, thank you for the card. We'll see if uh, the tracks it goes into the graveyard, though. It does go into the graveyard. But no Gorios, thankfully. we we'll leave this on two, giving the highest chance to cast Riders this turn, which would be so important. Um, holy shit. There we go. Rally. I think, I think Rally is one short, unfortunately. Yeah. That's okay, we'll, we'll have Riders next turn. Well, maybe we could Violin Rally. Still like a ton of damage. MK, 34 months, they go come back. Yeah, hopefully Modern will just be finally perfect in, every, in everyone's eyes. Band Force Litigation, final offer? Hmm. Wild card. All right, you can uh, take some damage to your opponent, probably. And give me a card. Hold on, let me, let me turn off these auto yield. <laughs> you probably don't want to do that when I have a Vial on two and could uh, just smack you with another Thalia's Lieutenant here, but get on to six. Let me go ahead and... Writers at the ready. Yeah, they'll come on the stream today and they'll be like, after watching Aspiring Spike go 1-0 with gross humans, decided to ban Writers of the Mark. They have their Gorios. How many humans do I get? Fortunately, don't get it too many. Do they reveal an Ephemerate? No Ephemerate revealed here, so one of their original three cards here will basically have to be an Ephemerate, or they're, they're certainly cooked. It may just be dead anyways, I don't know. Aren't we on CDT or no? I'm on uh, CST. I guess Central Daylight, maybe CDT. Thanks, Matthew, you have a good stream too. Start on top with the archive. Attacks and then can see. Nice. We're really good to win game one. I have four Sanctifiers. Gora is getting a lot more popular, so I'm starting to respect it a little bit more in uh, Cyborg's moment. I think I'm going to go the one into Burning Tree Dead. And... This doesn't stop. It stops for a rebound, uh, rebound Ephemerate. And I think, I think on the draw, I don't want to play these Maguses. If Cascade decks are hurt after tomorrow. Well, today's the ban list, but how do you feel the meta shift? Yogg tier zero. Um, I mean, Yogg is already kind of tier zero. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that, Yogg is already like such a difficult deck to like interact with and hate out. I think I have to keep this. I'm like legally obligated. Yeah, I think, I think Magus, I think I want to bring Magus game three on the play if we go there. I don't think I want to end this. Adeline goes so far. It looks a little slow compared to other stuff. I like Adeline a lot. I've played a lot of humans and think Adeline is a really important card for the deck. I, I do agree that if the curve was a little lower, maybe it would be better just, just for the writers. Um, but I have a hard time imagining that this doesn't make it in the deck. Is it Could it be played as less than a four of, I guess? Yeah. The Graveyard attracts and put a Fibra into the hand. This card is ooh, so good. Um, We'll take this up to one. Okay, interesting.
Becky for four or five. What do you think they could do to Yogg to nerf it but not kill it? It's tough. It's because it's like, do you really want to have Grist on the ban list? Do you want to have Cauldron on the ban list? Do you want to have Court of Calling on the ban list? It's just all so weird. Um, I'm not saying that they 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 would I'm a, <laughs> unban Fury. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Uh, take this up. Land or two drop would be really nice. Okay, we found the land. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and cast. Bad boy, I think. Wall of Roots. I don't know. It's like, it's you get like the vintage problem of like instead of banning Workshop, you're just banning, <laughs> you know, artifacts that can, can be cast off Workshop. But I, I don't know. Like Yog Yogmoth is really nasty, and um, the Cascade decks do have like a kind of reasonable time against it, and um, I think I think like it, Yogmoth is like one of the hardest decks in the format to hate out. It just like it just is so good, consistent, resilient, fast, hard to interact with under like almost any circumstance. Just, uh, just a tough one. They do have a solitude, and they also have this. Yeah, Bone Masters isn't even like good right now. It's like I, I I don't I don't think they should ban anything is also my answer. Uh I I I, I would I would much rather see unbans in modern right now than bans. But faithful mending into their hand here. I'd like to see twin, seething song, birthing pod, um Jete, Punishing Fire. Something like that. Yeah, glimpse. Uh, I, gl glimpses. I'm kind of I think just as gameplay probably shouldn't come off, but as far as like power level would be. Things don't scare me. I feel like it'd be everything could be pretty. Pod, there's no way. Yeah. So one thing about Pod is I actually don't think Yogmoth would play it. <laughs> um. I, I actually don't think they'd play it, or um, it would be kind of awkward. Like the all like like having to pay four life for it is like this. When I tested it with Caleb, was like a pretty pretty real cost. It's like it's like kind of like I, I don't know. I think I think it wouldn't be like I think Cauldron is better than Pod. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Footsteps of the Gorio reveal the top ten. There's an ephemerate in there, so we can concede. Gonna go to game three. Hopefully we have a sanctifier. Maybe you should be mulliganing kind of aggressively. I'm gonna play the I think Magus is maybe over Adeline on the play. Try it. <coughs> yeah, re whenever you suggest restricting cards in modern, you're it's just a, a point. It's never it's never ever gonna happen. There's just no point. It is never ever gonna happen that they would restrict cards in modern. It's just kind of like a board, like, oh, what if? And then, oh, yeah, I guess that'll never happen. I kind of want to save the Sanctifier until I can vial it in an instant speed. Maybe we're getting Prismatic ending here. Maybe we're getting Grief Scams, which would be bad. Prismatic is okay, we've got plenty of it. I'll, I'll cast the Sanctifier if I don't have anything else to do, of course. Especially if I just have another one. They can Solitude it, of course. Do it? 16 months? Thank you, welcome back. Yeah, Hypergenesis is worse than Glyphs. You could unban Hypergenesis, so then it would never see any play, probably. I mean, I'd maybe try it, but... Yeah, I would... Second Pending? Second pending. Explosives on two. Unlikely to cast this. Do I sack my... I think I'll sack. Natty Basic Island is... Obnoxious, but... Why is Gorez become so popular? It's just very good. I think it's been very good. Um, it's It's been very good and is is currently very good. Just... 
strong strategy in modern. And the surveillance have helped it a lot, but I think it was good before then too. It's like it's really like this deck was super bad when Scam was the the main. So, how did you find yourself playing humans in modern? This card, Riders of the Mark, one man is is kind of a ridiculously cool and powerful card. I think to to try to build around, and this is a brew stream. I'm gonna try to brew around a cool, interesting, and uh, underutilized card. Uh, in Modern, which is what I do every day on the stream. Alright, here's a mark. Seven mana, costs one less for each human you control. Trample haste, beginning of your end step, return it to your hand. If you do, if it attacked, if you do, uh, make a number of one ones equal to its toughness. Kind of a bunch of crazy text on that one. Back for four. Kind of feel like they'll pop the explosives right now. Hogak is safe to unban. Hogak is, 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 Hogak is maybe like the number one card you should never unban. It's like top three. Hogak, Hogak is potentially the worst magic card ever designed. I, I, it's kind of dramatic, but it's like, it's, I, I just remember looking at it and I'm like, okay, they, like surely they know something I don't know. Like there's no way this is just, that this is just the card. <laughs> <laughs> this is, there's no way that this is the card I remember thinking but no it just like you just cast it from your graveyard you cast it from hand you cast it for zero mana it has trample it's an 8-8 eight, eight for zero mana it just it just like just doesn't have weaknesses it's, so, it's just so dumb So it looks like we got to fade the basic swamp now because they've already used three solitudes here. Or they're down three solitudes. Usually bands go pretty fast, yeah, or unbans like an hour or two. Of course, design does not equal strongest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not strongest, but just design wise, it's just it's just like like why can it be cast from your graveyard over and over again? Why does it have trample? Why is it hybrid mana? It's like why is it an eight eight? It's it, it's just it, it's just like literally every part of Hogak is like what? Why you were wrong? You were wrong in in, the, in 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 your choices here. I guess with the exception of you can't spend mana to cast it. That part was good, but also why would you ever even want to do that in the first? Maybe it's a swamp and basic planes. Well, basic planes isn't going to do that much. I guess the swamp also. I guess they came with these. They're the next turn. Hmm. I guess they will want to put a counter. Oh, they. I think they fucked up. I think they were supposed to put a counter. Oh, they can't double block. Never mind. Never mind. Also Pioneer. I think, um, I, I haven't been playing a lot of it. Some people say it's time for Treasure Cruise to go. I I still don't really know how Treasure Cruise has, like, remained a legal Pioneer card for all of this time. That part is, that, that has always confused me by a lot. Um, I, <laughs> um, but it, it is a legal Pioneer card. Um, <laughs> maybe it shouldn't be, I don't know. Okay, 2-0. Alright, let's keep this. Worst matchup if this is Yogg. The right the the trample from Riders and Enti I think helps a lot. We have three cursed totems and a prayer. So what's the do I oh, I drew Enti. I think I just go violin, lieutenant, in response to the trigger. Violin the champ, and then next turn I can rally plus lieutenant, which is just so so much pressure. I can also sentinel if I draw land. You see, legacy Delver players are picking up thoughtbound battles. I haven't seen it, but it it is it is just that good. Although 
you have to c- c- consider in Legacy is like a little bit more of a cost, I guess. Yeah, being on the draw against Jog too, even with like a pretty solid hand, is just just asking a lot. Looking for a land. They're gonna kill my alleys. I guess I that. Maybe they would kill my sentinel here sometimes. Pretty good turn three. If, we, if we're on the play this game, we'd have a chance. Put some triggers on the stack. Oh, they didn't kill this. Okay, so now I just have a 4-4 four, four haste that... Or 3-3 three, three haste. I'm going to attack with everything. I'm going to take 11? 13! Take 13! With two blockers on turn 3. Let's go, dude. We could have seen pretty anti and T would change your mind. I, I play-tested it. <laughs> I play-tested in T, and it was better than I thought. Um... Giving Esper Sentinel that extra counter matters a lot. The Trample matters a lot more than I thought it would. Okay, they got the combo. I'll make him show me the blood earth, I guess. Two. Yeah, NT is better than Felden, is what I've kind of determined at the moment, I guess. Um. I think Adelin's not very good in this matchup. Not awful, but I think we just keep one end, trim the rest. Of hitting for or two and three doesn't matter. I mean, it's just like if we're playing an aggro deck in modern. If we're on the play, we win the game. If we're not, you know, just have a harder time. Have the dy- dynamic of playing decks like this. Sometimes they just say it is what it is. Get to attack for seven on turn two, eight on turn two. They have fatal push. <laughs> Fuck, dude! Imagine I get uh, legions ended here. I could just concede. <laughs> he would do this uh, with this like super telegraph fatal push. Try to still have a, a big beefy boy next turn instead of going burning tree rally this turn. Containment Priest in the sideboard. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, Cursed Totem, maybe Containment Priest is better. It could complement a little bit. To some extent, there's only, like, so much you can do for, like, what is such an awful matchup. Songs showing for Gore's Trexes this week in Philly. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I have no doubts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y- Yogg has always been human's worst matchup. Absolutely. No illusions here. A fatal push is pretty. Tough, especially after you mulligan. BL. A lot of turn one vile seven. Okay. Anders. You pull with outburst ban cards and banner no changes. Island go. Yeah, it's okay, Well, It's funny. Um, yeah, we can do prediction. BNR. Oh, living in. 
Also, another one where you just can't lose the sideboard. Or the die roll. Read our prediction. No changes to modern. Outburst banned. I just don't think if they were going to ban something, it would be anything besides outburst. Um, or odd bans in modern. I do 10 minute prediction here. What the deck is like. We sure are curving out and attacking for a lot every single game. Yeah, no changes to modern. Take a pretty big commanding lead. Ten minutes, it'll probably be announced before polls end. I don't I don't know that that's true. It might be announced before the poll ends. I, but, are, like, wh when is the stream? They're doing a stream, right? I gotta know about the stream. Okay, potentially... Stream is tomorrow. So they're announcing the, the bands today, and then there's a stream to discuss tomorrow? I don't like that structure. Yeah, there was a time change in the U.S. this weekend. Changing the rules on Cascade to count the split cards as being hit. Fire Ice is pretty busted. I hate it. Pretty bold attack here. We're going to cast a Curator. A pretty big draw for me. If I could draw something to help me punch through. All of a sudden, kind of good shape. I'm gonna leave this one too. Okay. Not nothing. I think I didn't want to violin the lieutenant. You telegraphed? I maybe I'm over. I maybe I'm just overthinking it. How telegraphed it was, or it wasn't there? I guess they can. SK would see fire as two two. So have to choose one to cast. Yeah, I, I get it. The, the 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 errata is dead gone, and fire ice can't be played in rhinos anymore. So like, I don't know. Maybe I I just I don't know. I that, that could be fine. That's something I, I feel very strongly about, I think. No attacks. Likely means violent outbursts, so let's go. Scion or Leyland being banned is silly. The deck is not doing that well. It's a, it's fine. It is too early. It doesn't have the numbers. It just makes no sense to me. It is one of the this is very very nonsensical. Double chump, they're gonna attack food then violent outburst. I think I'm gonna let this is anything we pull. E I just killed the generous when I didn't need to fuck. Such a bad vial there. I thought I thought I was getting I was getting lethal, like playing around Shardless Agent. Is it Domain Rhinos like three times more popular than Teamer? Uh, I don't know that that is the case, but even even if that is the case, I don't feel like Domain Rhinos is like does it have the numbers to be banned? I don't know that I feel that it does. But I I think I think domain rhinos is like I'm playing against regular rhinos and not domain in the leagues a lot more than I'm playing against domain lately. Probably not. But it, it, I don't know. It, it's also just like the problem with domain rhinos is not the leyline scion part of the. It's the rhinos part. Of... <laughs> Um, I see Willow. Let me. 
Between these five. And he's kind of nice, discards some humans into the... I don't know if I should bring in these Sanctifiers or not. You should be, end up being kind of disappointed by them. Let's not. Uh, Nexus, uh, 39 months. Thank you, we'll come back. So that is nothing. Well, it exiles Grief, uh, Oliphant, Street Wraith, and um, Architects, which it's a pretty big chunk of their, of their stuff. Outburst Band? Wow. They fucking did it, dude. Vintage Unbanned? Wait, what? Un unrestricted? I'm huh. They were, we are literally playing against Living In. Enjoy. Enjoy your little... Good outburst, brother. Do I win this match? Bruce Taze and Pioneer. Let's see what they said about it. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, do they have, like, data that says, like, Rhinos and Living End, or and or Living End just has crazy numbers? In our previous modern update, we removed Fury and upped the Beanstalk from the environment. Doing so has returned Rectus Midrange to acceptable level, I agree with that, without deleting it from the metagame entirely. Since then, we've seen Team of Rhinos, Living End, Golgari Yogmoth, Amulet Titan, and Is It Phoenix rise up in the metagame share. More recently, players have had some success with Leyland and the Guild Pack from Murders, and Domain Rhinos featuring Cylon and Leyland. Team of Rhino says we're going to approach levels of Rectos mid-range level dominance. Yeah, the, the percentages are really high. Wait, did they say Is it Phoenix? Did I say Is it Phoenix? Who said Is it Phoenix? The ability to coup Violent Officers. Yeah, I, I agree. Violent Officers banned. Weakening both Cascade strategy to some except the level of my game was if we abandoned the previous paragraph. <laughs> what the fuck? This must be an isn't Murktide. This is, must just be a typo. That, that, like surely surely this means Murktide. So domain so Rainbow Rhinos just plays Ardent Plea. And living in I don't know. Probably still broken. I literally can't talk any shit about typos in the the in articles because like <laughs> if I if I was doing these articles, I would be ripped to shred. Cascade is dead. I don't know. It's a little dramatic. I I I I like their their reasoning here. They're like uh, you know, the violent outburst force negation is, you know, the most popular strategy in modern. The gameplay sucks. It's pretty dominant. Let's nerf the archetype without killing it, because uh, we can ban violent outburst, but you can still just you, now you just have to do everything at sorcery speed. <laughs> my person's oh, am I illegal? You weren't joking. <laughs> Sorry, you had to find out. I, you know, I'm like, I don't know, I'm literally playing against Violent Outburst right now. No, I I feel like them just having to do their shit at sorcery speed. I This doesn't feel that. <laughs> this that feels kinda okay to me. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I, I think that this will likely be a positive change. I like their reasoning. There's, there, there is like a big, I think, disconnect. There's like a big, um, there's just a lot of different like band philosophies that people have, right? Some people feel like you should just be win percent tournament point purist. Some people think you should just 
you should ban based on metagame percentages rather than win percentages. Rhinos also has like a very high win percentage, like relative is like between like fifty and fifty five percent on any given weekend. That range. It's like kind of gnarly. Um And I the and, and like also like kind of simply put, like the gameplay <laughs> the gameplay against the Cascade stuff is like repetitive and old. So I, I feel like it's kind of like a mix of like win percentage, metagame percentage, and gameplay considerations without it being without any one of those three things being like the big deal breaker. They also will not unban anything. <laughs> where where am I gonna get any content from? I've gotta entertain you bastards. Timeless wasn't even the category for now, so yeah, I don't know like how that stuff's managed. Time for ardent plea, yeah. Let's see, I'm down to like do like Rainbow Rhinos League with ardent plea or something. Yeah, this this play I, I'll allow. Uh... Mm-hmm. Force negation get cheaper, uh. Maybe. Okay, so another thing is Gorios is now the premier instant speed combo deck. What a play for Hunter Bird now. Yeah, Gorios is now premier instant speed combo deck if you want to play Force of Negation. What are Yogwas bad matchups? Uh, Rhinos. Uh, Titan. Tron, Tron is not very good, I think, for, for Yogmoth. I think. Tron it would, could be a good counter to Yogmoth. Um, the Titan matchup is weird, where I think it like gets a lot better post board typically, but like I think it's probably pretty good for Titan game one. But, like meta gaming against Yogg is tough. There's like there's just like it's that deck is just so tough to hit out. Can't, can't vile this in, unfortunately. Can we just go back in time before the Fury Van? Yeah, we gotta keep moving forward, brother. Yeah, we could. This is the world we live in now. Can someone link the uh, BNR announcement? I got a, a tweet to make. Gamer. Just painting. My Google image conniving hands. Bear with me. Oh, dude, look at these hands. Let's go. They fit like the, the black suit. Oh, this looks awful. <laughs> but does it work? Keep this on the draw against that. I think there's no no caption here. I think no caption. <laughs> No updated state of modern. I feel like I... I'm trying to tone it down. I, I started playtesting NT over Felden after not liking Felden that much and ended up liking NT a lot. Does Jog have a bad Rhinos matchup? Yeah, yeah. You need that Jog meme, please post? I posted it. I posted it. You gotta follow me on uh, x.com. 
formerly known as Twitter, in the future will be known as uh, Twin.gov. <laughs> This is maybe the last time I ever have to play around violence. I'm thinking I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to draw a Dranath Magistrate off this Sentinel Trigger or my Sunbake Canyon. Oh wait, I don't get to Sentinel Trigger now. Stupid Violent Outburst. Fake card, fake deck. Alright, I'm gonna respond to this trigger with the Copper Coat. Fake deck anyway. One of the best cyber cards were Scorios. The deck is kind of weak to graveyard hate. <laughs> but, um... Start, you, usually the BNRs go into leagues really fast. Um, not Maybe not immediately, maybe with, like, within the hour usually. What can combat Yogg and Titan as the third top deck? Is it Zoo? Zoo, yeah. Uh, Zoo seems like a good... Uh, four color, four color Omnath is also, I think, pretty good against both uh, Yogg and Titan. Seems like a, a pretty good um, position for them. Likely, I think that Tron is pretty good against Yogg and pretty bad against Titan. Yeah, Mono Blue Tron, brother. But it, that's not bad. It means you're seven four trampler six round for another turn. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe you could play Winota. It's also a bit tough, too, because, like, this won't be as easily castable. Because you won't have as many humans to play. You have non-humans to play first. Titan is decent versus four color. I, I remember that in the Lord of the Rings era, the Titan players really didn't like the four color matchup. I don't know if that's changed a lot, but that that's why I have that impression, was that... Like, four-color Titan with the One Ring was supposedly this big nightmare matchup for Titan players where everyone stopped playing Titan. Uh, is, 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 that maybe is just not the case anymore. I don't know. Um, Titan players can be kind of dramatic. Yeah, that could have just been Titan Cabal propaganda. Yeah, yeah, another big thing is Force of Negation is now good against the Cascade decks. Where Force of Negation was bad against Rhinos and Living End, it is now a good card against Rhinos and Living End, which is a pretty big dynamic change to the modern. Like, Force of Negation might be a card that fair decks want a main deck again. Also, the Rise of Phoenix, they bit Murktai, give them a break. Listen, they got one person still typing away at the, the ban announcements after the layoffs. We need to support them. Although the Titan players, I tell you what, they their their deck is legal because they spread propaganda like the Cascade players just didn't. They the you don't see rhinos and living in players on Twitter every single day going, Our deck is so poorly positioned now, it just it just isn't playable. It just isn't playable. Wins the tournament. It's okay, it was okay for that tournament, it isn't playable now for like for years and years and years, nonstop, a never ending cycle of our deck is awful. And but just also like kills you on, on turn two and turn three and like isn't <laughs> so hard to interact with. And, I don't know. <laughs> they they run good propaganda. Main deck explosives. I think Gores yeah, Gores is good against Titan, I think. Uh I think I think Gores is also like kind of okay against Yogg. It's like it's a lot worse than it used to be because of Cauldron. Do I have a fair shellless brew to rise from the ashes? Sure. I do. Red Titan is very hard to run, right? It's so easy. Yeah. To be fair, huh? But I, I think the format opens up in a big way. Like, you know, I've been struggling, I think, a little bit with the brews lately. The format has been kind of Justin, we'll see. We'll see if that's the case, or like, is Yogg just like really Yogg and Titan are just tier zero? Seems like positive for Rakdos. Yeah, yeah, Rakdos was bad against uh, Rhinos, and Rakdos is also, I think, you know, good against Titan and bad against Yogg. Used to be so good against Yogg, but you know, the Fury ban is just flips the script. 
Yeah, I think Code Blade would be better positioned. Although I think it didn't have an okay Rhinos matchup. Um, so let's see if they pay here. I'm gonna keep my Sentinel. I think I'm about to get a two-two Sentinel. Seems pretty good in the board state. Creativity, Amulet, Coffers, Jog. These are the four decks Cascade had a positive matchup in and it kept in check. I think that's a good analysis, yeah. Oh, this card sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> Top deck a human, cast a human. Took the damn MTG battle. Yeah, yeah, that, that also is correct. That I can check. <laughs> People in the ban list are afraid of being counterspelled. Yeah. So call it Coat Blade, call it Mystic Coat. I think I like my deck names to be just as descriptive as possible, but. Okay, you draw a card, I draw a card, even Stevens, huh? Watsy listening to Twitter Widers with no format knowledge yet again. I mean, this is like a really easy slam dunk, but... Like, let's look at Goldfish, right? The the, the percentage of Cascade is was super high for a long time. It's like 16% plus 7, and it's also the top 2 in the metagame. Uh, is like that is this is an alarming number. Um, I I do wish they would have talked more about the the win percentage of these uh, of both decks. I agree. I think I wanted to hear a little bit more about what the the, what the win rates were were. But it's also kind of tough because you're talking about like three decks: Team of Rhinos, Rainbow Rhinos, and girl, um, and Living End. But I, I I feel I feel like the consideration and and it, and I, I agree that there's also you know with this you know dunk or whatever there's there's a disconnect between between bandless philosophies with players like i i think that you need to look at metagame percentage overall win percentage in tournaments and then take a small consideration uh a small consideration for like uh gameplay patterns for your bands uh wizard seems to be lately a lot more interested in using gameplay considerations for their bands and you can Obviously, I think I think in this matchup the riders are just so hard to get through against like removal that deck that we just have to cut the riders. Um, you can obviously agree disagree on like on this philosophy, but you also have to acknowledge that like different members of the player base just like some people some people just care about meta game percentage, some people just care about overall tournament win percentage, some people just say fuck violent outburst ban it. So, but but like to, to say that this is just. Twitter outrage. I feel like is I, I even don't I don't even feel like it was nearly as bad as last time. And I don't know if I saw anybody even calling for this, but this is like this, this is like alarm bell numbers of like top of the meta game. And it's like it's like alarm bell numbers top of the meta game with like relatively high win percentage and also being kind of miserable repetitive gameplay pattern. And it's like it feels like an okay band to me. I. I'm okay with it. I'm happy with it, I think. Sly and Draco Band. Sly and Draco Band would be, I think, nonsensical. We switch it to 14 days, not 30 days? Okay. You're right, that probably is a better snapshot. I'll probably start doing that. Although, it doesn't look much different. Am I supposed to refresh? Is the fact that it's... Oh, it is different. Down 2%. First Krupa Falls went up almost a percent here. Not a huge change. If it's gameplay considerations, rings shouldn't be legal. Yeah, you, you, you didn't listen to what I said. <laughs> you didn't listen to you said, you have this opinion of the ring as is, is miserable. You didn't listen to what I said. You just want your opinion to be agreed with here. <laughs> you did not listen to me. <laughs> Is a combination of metagame percentage with percentages and gameplay factors here. (laughs) 
I probably could have said anything, and they still would have said Ring should have been banned. Is living in a dead deck now? Mm, I don't think so. It is kind of, it is much, much worse. Uh, not only because they have to play all at sorcery speed now, but also because their mana is going to be... E either they play Demonic Dread to be a 3... Oh, so they can't play Demonic Dread anymore, because... I guess they just become banned. You just become banned. Your mana's not that much worse. Yeah, your mana's okay. Your cyclers are maybe worse, so you have to look at it. But you become banned, and then you're all at sorcery speed. You, you can just still play Living End. I heard you see less qualifier, 400 players, all 10 different decks, leagues have their own weird meta. Last call, 400 players, 10 equals all different decks. I know, I know leagues and qualifier tournaments are different, but... But I don't. I don't know. You're not engaging with me well. If you go, if it's gameplay considerations, ring shouldn't be legal. It's just so far off from like what I'm saying, you know, or what I what I what I believe here. I just don't know how. <laughs> you, you you just think ring should be illegal for and I I I I, I think, which is silly. You think it should give it any considerations to grief? No, I don't think so. I think Rakdos is not a very good deck, and like grief is in Living End and it's in Gorios, but this isn't time. I think. What's my pen on Ring? Ring is fine. I think it, it's just it just costs four mana in what is a currently very fast format. It is just it's not a very good format to be casting the Ring in. It's a playable card, but just like four four mana spells in general are like. Like the the ring is one of them, but they're just kind of slow. There's a lot of lot of spell pierces, stubborn denials out of uh, out of domain zoom. I don't know. It, it, it's a good, it's a playable card, but it isn't. What well, I'm just saying, it's not like close to like something I think should be banned. It's good against humans. I should have played the champ first. Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of overcommitting if I do. I think living in is dead. If you can't play an outburst and force negation back up, I don't think you can do everything against counter spell decks. Well, you, see, you can play grief and mystical dispute. You can play it's a fairy time raveler because now you're in bant. Yeah, you could. I don't know. It's I'll be like, it's much worse for you. The card counter spell is now very good against Living End. Um. Oh, sorry, did forget to attack for the human. Oopsie doops. Hard to manage these kind of conversations in play. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it's. I, I'm happy with the ban. I don't know. I it, I know it's just always it always feels bad because people buy into decks. They get you know. It's it's just it's just so hard to please everybody, but this feels like something that in the long run will likely be a positive change. While also like it's it's kind of the same thing as banning Fury in a sense where you are you're banning one of the best cards in the format, Violent Outburst. Violent Outburst, arguably best card in the format, uh, you know, before being banned here. You're you know, you're you're doing this and you're also um you're also like nerfing decks without killing them. Like Rhinos and Rhinos and uh, is is a four color Scion deck now. I think almost surely, and then living in this band with Art and Plea. But you can still, you know, play these strategies in the format. I think I probably should have played the champ. I was just worried about Damnation, but maybe maybe should have been worried about a card that we probably can't beat anyways. I don't know. We could go with Champ Adeline as a follow up. Maybe it was okay. Is living in just going to disappear from the metagame? Can it still adapt? I think I think you could be banned with Agent Arden Plea. You are not going to main deck Force of Negation anymore. If there's a lot of counter spell, if there are a lot of counter spell decks in the format, you could main deck to Fairy Time Raveler potentially as like a way to to combat these strategies. You could you know main deck. Um, you could main deck Mystical Dispute, which is something that these kind of strategies have done in the past, but. Also, are there going to be a lot of counter spells in the format? There's, it, you know, in, in, in fact, like, Force of Negation, 
that in some ways it gets better, in some ways it gets worse. It's kind of weird here, and there's just a lot, a lot of factors at play that are hard to predict. But I, I, I don't think Living In is just going to be forever an unplayable deck. Maybe Living In can play Solitude. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of an oh, interesting card to include, but it could play Solitude. It could be a sideboard card. Time to blue Blood Rain Rider Living In. Yeah, maybe. Blade on his two busted with Scion. It literally can't be targeted with Wrath Effects. I mean, Pick Your Poison is in the format. There's Edicts are in the format. It any almost any color has like access to disenchant effects of some kind. It, you can interact with it. Next on the cling to dust is kind of interesting here. I think I'll play the two by two two drops here and just just concede if they draw damnation. Um. I know, I agree it's just so hard to keep everybody happy. Seems like y'all get name loaded to zero. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, I'm scared of these two decks for sure. To some extent, too, it does re relieve a lot of pressure on sideboards where potentially you don't have to play a lot of Cascade Hate at the moment, and so... Does that let decks open up their sideboards to focus Yogg and Titan? Can you keep them in check? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Yeah, but Cascade decks are not banned. You are they're now they're now base banned instead of base teamer, and they play Shardless Agent and Ardent Plea, and you still can't deafening silence them. <laughs> um but you but yeah, they they are now uh they're now a lot easier to fight with counter magic, I think is, you know, the biggest deal. <laughs> yeah, Gorios, I think, is likely better. Like, people will play less Graveyard Hate with Living End Gone. Although the thing is, Gorios is also, like, a lot more of a known quantity that people are, like, ready for. Go game three. Does Banch Rhinos make sense? Um, yeah, but you, it, it's not clear if you want to play Bant or if you want to play Four Color with Scion. Yeah, with Art, yeah, Teferi is also, like, really good with Art and Plea. bounces your Art and Plea. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put back the Burning Tree here. Yeah, and now, like, just every deck has, like, so many, like, Engineered Explosives and Chalice. It's, like, four or five slots for Cascade for a lot of our cyborgs, and so now you get to, like, target Titan and Yawgmoth a little bit more aggressively at the moment, and we'll just see what happens. Is Tron good? So Tron is really good against Yogg. I think this has been part of, like, why Yogg has been such a good deck in Modern, <laughs> putting it very simply, uh, is that, like, there's just not a lot of Tron. Um, Edict? I think I just play NT. I'm gonna play Copper Coat. I'm gonna play NT. Murktide is always good. Well, Murktide is really bad against Yogg at the moment, and like we'll, <laughs> I think, continue to just be awful in that matchup. I do think Coffers gets a lot better too. Lots of Astrotold and Living End. Uh, unplayable. Probably. I just, I don't know why you would want to. Oh, sorry, I missed the Urborg here. Not that our life total matters very much here. Brand of mine, 30 months. Thank you, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Offer says bad match against Amulet. That's fair, yeah. Big mana decks get really good now. Yeah. Fucking Ballista for two. <laughs> I guess if they're spending four mana to deal with this, that's fine. We got a lot of answers to this. Are you surprised to see Noah bans? Uh, I mean, they just... Not really, because it's like... If, if they felt like these kind of cards that I think would be nice to be unbanned, if they felt like they were unbannable, they would have unbanned them already. You know what I mean? It's like... 
I'm not like particularly more surprised to see Nolan bans. I just think that there are probably like five or six cards that would be like actively positive to come off the ban list. Um, first player here, 27 months. Thank you. Welcome back. And Saijite with the 18 months. Thank you as well. Ugh, brutal. Uh, I guess I'm being in copper coat. Let's have this be a two power creature here. Shouldn't there be an arbor for image three? Uh maybe. Thunder Junction. Well do I I think they do BNRs after Pro Tours, not set releases, but I may be misremembering. Just you know, hard to keep up. We'll try and eat the whole meta game. Well, we're trying to pretty bad against Titan. To some extent it always kind of feels like Titan is kind of capped on how many uh I guess I should have played this because I could draw another Sunbeak Canyon, huh? Tron, Tron always feels kind of capped on, like, how... Or Titan, Titan feels kind of capped on how many people can be playing it at once. Okay, this is a window after set release. Okay, cool. Okay, four mana Fatal Push. Cling to Dust by Canyon. Can we draw land? Yes, yeah, okay. Picks okay. Two zero oh, to two three. Feels bad, but we also lost to a uh, violent outburst, so doesn't count. Two. Yeah, this will not kill Cascade, which I think is like. I I think it is nice when you ban what is arguably the best card in the format. Violent Outburst, and the deck still stays around because the strategy is still so strong. But um, let's let's take a look at Rhino's post, uh, post-Violent Outburst. Don't play a lot of Rhino.